party with your host, Dustin Ripka. Hello and welcome to the Sex Party. I'm your host, Dustin Ribka. With me on the show this week is Sarah Javans. She is back. You remember Sarah from a few episodes ago. She is a dating coach. This episode is far hornier than the last time she was here. We talk about the version of non-monogamy that Sarah practices with her partner, threesomes, foursomes, Sarah's adventures and misadventures in the sex clubs, dicks coming out of the shadows. Uh, Yeah, shadow dicks. We also talk about her OnlyFans and the first time she ever squirted. Spoiler alert, she squirted five times the first go round. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Sarah Javance. This week's conversation. conversation. Sarah Javance, welcome back to Sex Party. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Good. Thank you for having me on again. Yeah. I didn't scare you away the first time. Round not, two. <laughs> not, not even close. Not even close. You would have to do a lot to scare me away. Um, I think the viewers, the listeners would be like, yeah, scaring this guy away. Good luck. Good luck. This guy's a nut. Um, the first time you were here, we talked about you being a dating coach primarily for men. Um, and, and yes, I'm recapping, right. I'm recapping right now for everybody out there. So, so I hope you appreciate the recap. She's a dating coach in case you didn't watch the first episode. Stop this right now. Go watch (laughs) it. Go listen to it. Come back. This is, uh, essentially part two. Um, we talked a lot about your, your history being embedded with, uh, the, 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 um, the pickup coaches, the pickup artists artist right artist coach whatever um but this episode i think myself you the listeners the viewers the people who started the um online write-in campaign i'm just kidding there wasn't one of those but everybody wants this to be like a hornier more personal wilder episode so let's give them what they want you know Exactly. Right. And for those of you listening, can't see that she was sucking on her finger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but I, I mean, we, we touched on so much in the last one, right. And so much of it was like sexual stuff. There was a ton of value in the episode. Again, plug, go watch it, go listen to it. But we never really got to uh, who you are, right. As a person, as a sexual being. So, what is there an update? What what's been going on with you since the last episode? Meow. I like this. It's like it's like the origin story. I feel like we kind of we got into the origin story of how I became a dating coach, mm-hmm. but we didn't really go back in time to work out like who I am in that in the sexual world. And that's the name of the podcast. So how could we not do that? It's exactly. unfinished business. That's why we're back. And um an update since I've last chatted to you, my goodness. Uh, went over to Singapore and Bali and had some pretty wild adventures over there. And uh, now I'm back in Australia, back on home soil. Okay, so when you say wild adventures, are we talking? <laughs> you mean you know this is coming? <laughs> what the fuck? When you say wild adventure, <laughs> you open the door to this. This is your fault. Um, <laughs> well- I thought we might as well plunge straight in and yeah. open with a story. Yeah, yeah. I really mean, want to know. <laughs> Singapore, for God's sake, right? You know, uh, home of the Singapore <laughs> struggle. Yeah. Um, so, okay. <laughs> Are we talking like you're, you're hunting with a spear or like you're in the bars, like drinking snake blood or like what's going on? <laughs> hunting. Uh, no, I was just in one of these moods, you know, like I had – I had an audition for a film, so actually this self-tape. So I was in the hotel room from the moment I woke up until the sun went down Mm. in Singapore getting this self-tape done. So I was like this wild animal that was just like, I need to get out. I need to get out of this like little space and um, get out into the world. And we were actually over there uh, and celebrating that particular night for a few different reasons. And I was just in the zone. So, yeah, I was having (laughs) a great a lot of fun. I was just like, I was bringing the energy, you know, I was really in in the zone. And when I get into that state, I mean, all hell breaks loose often for all the good reasons, sometimes for all the bad reasons. But on that particular night, 
it was a hell of a lot of fun. I uh, ended up going home with a couple of new friends with my partner and had a really great night and then flew out the next day. So <laughs> that's that's my idea of like working hard and playing hard. There's the balance for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a, it was a 24-hour uh, Singapore trip or was it longer? It was it was just for the weekend. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll yeah, just for the weekend, but yeah, that it was Sunday, and then we had to fly out the next day. Okay. So I was feeling, you know, very sorry for myself the next day. But um, the adventures that we had the previous night it was just like, oh, like that's what I live for. You know, I just reminisce about that kind of experience. And I guess for me, sexually, it's I've just always been wired like that ever since I became a sexual being, if you will. I was just very open. I've always been super open and wanting to be inclusive of everybody like that's been my go-to yeah i don't know how yeah <laughs> well i mean a million places to jump but the one in the audience is like please ask her what exactly happened right so you and your part so you do you have you have a boyfriend you have a girlfriend like are you dating someone like uh, primarily right now yes yeah, so, yeah i've got my partner of three years okay. and i'd say that we're consensually non-monogamous but mostly monogamous to be honest i think three years in we're like come on we need to spice things up a little bit uh, yeah <laughs> get into the patterns we we're a lot more open and adventurous when it was <laughs> covid and we thought the world was coming to an end so we drank whiskey all night and uh, partied like it was like yeah you know that was the the end of the world so these days it's a little bit you know, far, far in between with the adventures. So when they happen, I'm like, Oh, <laughs> I'm just so excited. Yeah. Okay. So you're in the hotel room, you're working all day and then you're like, yeah. fuck, like I'm wound tight. He's wound tight. Yep. Right. We need to like go and fucking. So what you guys just start hitting bars, you go to dinner, what happens? There is, yeah, there's never an intention for it to happen. Mm. And this is one of the keys. Like when I even work with couples that want to be more open, it's just like, we don't go out with the intention. I personally don't enjoy it as a woman. Like I've been out where I'm like, hunt, you know, hunting, like, uh, you know, like trying to escalate. And it just feels all kinds of wrong as a woman to do that, as I've told you before in the last episode. But it's more the intention to have fun. And really when you know there's a connection with somebody, it doesn't feel like you have to work at it. It just naturally happens. And that's exactly what happened. It was just fun, went out to dinner, met our friends, was celebrating this big win for something on that day, went out to another club um, and we were just dancing until, you know, 3 a.m. in the morning and then we went, okay, cool, well, are we going to go back to the hotel room? <laughs> so uh, yeah, my partner had met somebody, I'd met somebody and we just naturally went back to the hotel room and had delicious wild sex for three hours. Okay, so the <laughs> the four of you, his new friend, your new friend, you guys go back to the hotel room as a for as a foursome, right? Do you guys yeah. go do your separate things, or is there like swapping happening? Or yeah, look, you know, we we're all in the same room, so it was, you know, sometimes there is swapping. That particular night, no, it was just I was very immersed with this new character that <laughs> I was exploring for that particular night. And um, he was also equally uh, taken by his new person. So I think that's one of the cool things. Like sometimes you want to to swap and have that fun. And other times, yeah, you just really want to enjoy that different flavor for that particular night mm -hmm. and then go on your merry way, which is exactly what we did for this particular trip. Yeah, and I think if more couples, uh, you know, and who am I to fucking say this, but this is yeah. what I think and fuck you guys. It's my show. So like, uh, I think if more couples could just get into that, like, Hey, it's, it's going to, whenever we need a, a sour candy kind of a moment, right? Like, yeah. boom, like we're just going to do this thing because we want to, cause we're not, like you said, you're not out like searching for it. You're not out, whatever, but you feel like wild and fun and free and, and yes. maybe you haven't done it before and boom. Right. So like, I think just incorporate the spontaneous, but I think the thing, and you know, this is where it always like turns into a, a something else is like people get fucking jealous. Right. So I was just about to bring that up. Yeah. So <laughs> if you, so you've been with your partner for three years, did you guys have a discussion like at the end of year one, year two, whatever, where you're like, you know, we should mix it up. I don't want to be jealous. Or like, how did that come about? <laughs> Uh, there, no, we don't have a yearly review. Uh, we probably should. Um, but our relationship was built on a lot of 
playtime with other people. Mm. So it, it was something that I lead with, right? My previous relationship, I was open with him as well. Um, and even when I, like when, my very first relationship, I remember being open. So I've become really used to communicating that to new people. I open with that. I don't care if I bring up threesomes on a first date because I know it's something important to me and I don't want to end up with a guy that is controlling and super jealous and unable to to lean into that or at least experiment and explore. It just won't work with me. I'm not compatible with, with any man like that. And so it's over years and years that I've been able to normalize communicating it and confidently communicating it as like a non-negotiable. So I'm like, this is how I am and I'm not ashamed of it. I, I really love this part of me. So you're either here for the ride or you're not. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, my partner was all about it, which is really great. And he's got this really fun, playful energy about him, very social, uh, but equally very conservative and just sort of that, that I don't, yeah, he's just like that warm, like protective energy for me. So it's a, a really great blend. Yeah. And it's great when you start that way. Like when you're coming, yeah. coming to the relationship, you're like, Hey, this is like what I'm about. You know, you might get a little a bit of chili flake here and a little, uh, whatever <laughs> around this time of year, like whatever, like when you can give them who you are essentially like, and they know to, I think the problem for other couples, uh, is like one person maybe secretly wants that or deep down wants that yeah. subconsciously or consciously doesn't want to talk about it and then they're like two three years in maybe six months i don't know right whenever <laughs> and they're like uh yeah i kind of wanna and they're like what the fuck get out you know and so um because i've seen that What's happen wrong with me? why am i not enough why are you yeah. thinking this you yeah. leave me like all of it can just bah, like bubble to the surface <laughs> yeah and when i when i have people who are in um, some form of non-monogamy, right? Because there's so many different forms and it's like custom fit really, truly. Yes. They always talk about how there is jealousy. There's always going to be jealousy. It just depends on like how you direct it, you know? So mm. I think it's brilliant that, that you're, you come right to the table with like, Hey, this, this is who I am. It's what we're doing. Yeah. And I want to add to this jealousy piece because it's huge. Jealousy is one of the greatest teachers that you will ever build a healthy relationship with. Jealousy is not a bad thing. Jealousy is amazing. I embrace it when it comes up. And I tell you what, there has been times where my partner's brought somebody and I'm like, nah, don't like her. <laughs> I just don't like her. No. And it's like, what, what do you mean, Sarah? I'm like, nah, just, just don't want it. You know? <laughs> and, and that can be so dependent on my mood, the time of the month, uh, what's happened to me during the day, how I was introduced to her. If I'm introduced to a new, new woman in the wrong way, get out. Like, I'm not interested. But 10 minutes, an hour later, you reintroduce me in the right kind of way could be completely different. And this is one of the things I learn. It's like, wow, it's, it's a really emotional experience, understanding your own jealousy and why it pops up and whether it's just a temporary experience because there's other unmet needs mm -hmm. that you and your partner need to work out. It's like, hey, can you introduce me in this way? Like that conversation needs to happen. Or, hey, I'm okay with this, but I'm not okay with that. Uh, but is that something as you go along? night to night or experience to experience, it's going to be slightly different. Uh, and that's something that I've definitely discovered. I've also just had to sit with my jealousy. Why am I feeling this way? Is it about the relationship? Do I think that he would leave me for this particular woman, but not that one? So yeah, I, I think jealousy is one of the greatest teachers for people if they want to be a bit more open in their sexual life. No, it is. It's like, it's so, it's such a different, uh, concept to grasp and so and we've we've i've i've who is just me on the show but I, i've uh i've hit it so many times um with the non-monogamy piece and it's like you can learn from it you can like feel it you can let it make you hornier you can let it make you angrier you can ruin shit or you can you know do none of the above and just let it sort of yeah. flow around in your brain and it, it just really depends on your understanding and a lot of people say um, it's not really about the other person. Oh, she's going to do this or he's going to, it's like, you have to ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Yeah. You know, like, so mm -hmm. I don't know if you're, if you're going through a lot of that too, like when you feel yourself get jealous, like, well, wait, wait a minute, what about this situation? You kind of said it with, would he leave me for her, this person, that <laughs> person, whatever. But like, 
you kind of have to ask them, like, why, why do I feel threatened? Why do I feel jealous? Yeah. And I think that's such a new, because, you know, our fucking, I, I, I grew up in Ohio, right? So it's like your dad fucking uh, hit on the cigarette lady again, or like what, you know what I mean? Like, and it's like this yeah. big three day long thing. And like every relationship um, that I've been privy to growing up was just, there was always a jealousy component and you either had a jealous, a really jealous partner or a medium jealous partner. And you never had a, a non jealous partner. So it's very interesting that um, there's that distinction between the non monogamy folk and, you know, yeah, look, I, I feel like if your partner wasn't jealous, I'd be kind of concerned, like you don't <laughs> care at all. Like, <laughs> you know, so I think it, it's really cute and sexy sometimes when it's like, Oh, are you jealous? And then you can really lean into that. Uh, and I like that because you're like, ooh, um, it's just a playful thing. But when it gets nasty, it's not enjoyable for anybody. Yeah. And so like your comment before about introducing, becoming a bit more open or exploring, I think is definitely harder than just starting from it at the beginning. Yeah. It's just clear. It's like I've been this way the whole way. It's nothing personal. It's not to do with you. But when you transition and it's one person leading the conversation more than the other, that's when I feel like, yeah, you've got bigger challenges to overcome. Yeah, it's a massive advantage, I think, just to be – I mean, to be to be real, to everybody listening and, and, and watching, like just being uncomfortably honest from the beginning is a massive, massive upgrade from just, you know, because – what there's a joke and I've talked about it a million times. Like I think Chris Rock has like a stand up comedy piece where he's like, when you meet someone, you're you're meeting the first three months, you're meeting their representative, like the best version. And I think that that's true, but I also think that's such bullshit because if we can learn to like cuss at the chase more. Well, the, yeah, that's, that's true though on a lot of levels oh, yeah. because you're not going to sit down and give you all like sit down with all your crazy straight up like day one. You're not going to go, hey, look, you know, sometimes I do this. I have, I have too many tequila shots. This is what <laughs> happens. Like, yeah. I'm probably not going <laughs> to, you know, go down that route. There's a little bit of crazy in all of us. I think it was is it um, what's his name, Alan Deboton. He has a, a talk about this on YouTube. I think it's a TED talk or something. And he talks about romanticism. And that's one of the things he says is, if you know, everyone's has, everyone is crazy. And if we sat down and actually put all of our crazy on the table, we would cut to the chase a lot faster. But I think he's got a great blend of realism and romanticism when it comes to dating and relationships and marriage. Yeah. I mean, that is such a... It's just a game changer. I mean, it's hard. It's not easy, but it, but like like we talked about last time, anything practiced becomes easier. So if you can get used to just like being yourself, and you, I mean, it sounds so cliche, but fuck, like they were trying to tell us something at some point in our childhood that mattered, and that was probably the one. Just try to be, but like you have to be yourself sexually. You have to be yourself, and that's in today's world. That's fucking crazy. Like it's not. It's not easy. It's not normal. This yeah, there's a lot of things that you have to confront both personally on your journey and also from others' judgments. Like that's been a huge part. I've gone through ebbs and flows of being like, fuck you guys for judging me without knowing who I am. Yeah. But it's just, it's part of the game. Like what, what people don't really understand, they have to blame you for something. They have to be like, oh, well, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Like that'll never work. Like there, there's just people out there. And so that's been a big part of the journey as well. I've found just being the person I am. Yeah. I mean, and everybody wants to talk about, you know, Oh, the, the relationship they broke up because the, you know, it's non-monogamy doesn't work, but nobody wants to talk about like how, how many fucking monogamous relationships just get ripped to shreds daily by the minute, you know, and there's cheating and yeah. all these other things. Yeah, I know. And it's an easier target. It is. No, it, so, no totally. Yeah. Anything different yeah. Is, is way easier. Yeah, you just, you got to be prepared for it, and that's okay. Like, yeah, you know, I get fiery about it sometimes, but it, it is what it is. And the thing is, I know that they're missing out on something that's really amazing. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, guys, just fucking, just just try it. Just just go 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 find go find a situation and, and ask to be a part of it just once, okay? Just 
Tell them Dustin sent you. Sarah sent you. It's, <laughs> it's, it's all right. Go down to Kinko's. See if there's a back room. I have no idea yeah. what, I'm ta- what I'm talking about. Um, Come on, you're going to have at least one threesome in your life. Yeah, <laughs> you, you really, really do. And I think that that's sad that most people are on their deathbed. And like the one, the one when they ask like these 95-year-old people, what do you regret about uh, – Uh, This is a fact, and you guys can Google it, but when they ask people who are dying what their regrets are, like 90% of the time, it's something sexually related that they, and, but they never say that. It's always like, oh, I didn't, you know, spend enough time with uh, my grandkids or I didn't figure out that grilled cheese recipe or whatever, whatever. But mainly it's, I didn't have enough sex with enough people, usually. Wow, that's a that's a fact. Mm-hmm. It's a straight up, <laughs> I find that fact. that's super interesting. But they do get pretty kinky in the nursing home, so maybe they make up for it there. I have I have heard that. Yeah, um, we should totally save that for a different episode. Um, yeah. so we'll, we're gonna totally kill this one. Um, okay, so have you had friends around you, or like coworkers, or acquaintances, or like friends of your partner? That's like, oh, you you're non monogamous, or you like to like do this once in a while, like that's weird fuck you that's gross like have you actually had that happen to you yeah definitely we've almost had to file like defamation cases against people saying that we you know would bring people up to our apartment and and have you know sex with them and stuff so yeah we've we've really yeah like legitimately and people that we know i'm like wow seriously like people that know us and know for a fact that we don't do that like saying some really messed up stuff like you know or you know, drugging people and like really bad. And I was, it just infuriated me because it tarnishes something which is just natural and beautiful and what most people do. So that's probably the worst. That's the spiky end of it um, that I can think of. And then there's just general conversations where people are curious because they've been a certain way their whole life and it actually just opens up for a cool conversation. Like I met a, a girl the other day and she said, I've like, blacklisted you in my head for the longest time because that you know you you and your partner are open and she's very much monogamous and it was actually one of the best conversations we're we're best friends now after just talking about it because I said to her I'm not out here going everyone should be like this as you said before Dustin every relationship has their own playbook you work it out and if that works for you guys it's awesome if this works for us that's great um I'm not out here preaching like a vegan to people to be be vegan you just do it because it works for you so um that conversation was really enlightening because you can coexist as someone who chooses to do relationship like this and someone who chooses to do it in a more monogamous way um so yeah look spiky end of things not so spiky pretty inspirational side of things yeah yeah yeah. well i mean big risk big reward right no guts no galaxy i can go all day with these analogies right because it's it's the (laughs) fucking truth right because they don't people it's so easy i mean and as as a human i've done it i see something different my whatever that is a little uh nervous system limbic system's like oh girl fuck that and i'm like wait a minute guy that's not cool. We don't judge like that. And then I bring it down, but I had to learn to do that over time. Um, mine was never sexual. It was like more like, how could you like uh nickelback or something, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> nickelback, come on. But like, you have to respect every, <laughs> you have to respect everyone's shit. And, yeah. and, and, you know, with sex, it's so personal. And I yeah. think there's such a level of jealousy of envy to it that like, you talk about defamation. I mean, that it it comes from almost like a, an ultra jealousy place, I think, because they're not getting anything that they want. Just brutal. And just so unnecessary. You know, I just think, wow, like I, I'm not, you know, I'm not going around saying those things about you. And like, I know that you have a, a business as well. So just on a professional level, I just think it's, it's very immature. It's very, very immature, especially this one particular person who was talking shit came came over one night wanting to do have a foursome. And I'm like, get out. I was just like, get out, you know, like coming in, flashing your titties, being like this. Meanwhile, on the streets, you're talking shit like get out, you know, like that stuff just irks me because the unfairness of it it's just it's unjust and so that's when i get fiery if i'm like okay so you're saying this but you're doing that Mm -mm. yeah so she so she came in flashing her titties trying to have a foursome while she was shit talking in the streets 
yeah, like before. Wow. And then she's, she's come over and I'm like, again, it's, it's not something that, you know, I don't need to name names or anything. It's just, yeah, wow, cool. like I find that behavior fascinating. That, that on one level, this is your, uh, the mask you wear outside. And then this is how you are behind closed doors. It's like, so again, somebody has to be the enemy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like there's a lot of people that are out there trying to work out who they are and what they believe in. And sometimes in certain circles, they want to be seen as this. And then in other circles, you know, they have permission to be whoever they want so they can show those parts. But it's just the reality. So many people live double lives and you've spoken about this quite a few times yeah. and with sex, it's the nature. Yeah. There's a, behind closed doors, you, you may be very different um, to how you present. Yeah, true. Um, so, okay, again, you don't have to name names, but these were, these were like other like coaches or like people in the industry, like don't work with her. She has gangbangs with her partner and they <laughs> swing from the ceiling and like, or what, like what, like who has the audacity? Like, what was the reasoning? Do you think that they were like hating on the internet or in the street or whatever? I'm not sure. I, I really, I think knowing the nature of that, that person I'm thinking of, and then the, the other people as well, I get it, I think you hit the 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 nail on the head mm -hmm. with jealousy and and just the opportunity to exploit it. Why not? I think people just literally take it as an opportunity yeah. to go, oh, this is juicy, this is dr drama, and they feed into it. Mm -hmm. So, I, like, I can talk about it now, but like going through it, you're like, wow, this really hurts. Like, this is unbelievable. But after it, I'm actually, you know, I like, I'm enjoying to talk about it because I think it's important to bring awareness to it because some people, if you go through that, you stop doing what, like you stop doing what you love to do mm -hmm. because someone's judged you. So I'm just glad that I processed it and I'm still me and I'm not letting it affect me now. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and you can always be fiery about it without letting it affect you. Uh, we love fiery yeah. on this show, as you know, so uh, you're you're more than welcome to get to get fired up um you mentioned that you've like put the kibosh on him bringing someone into the bedroom has he ever done that to you been like no 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 oh. not this fucking guy with the shoes no 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 yes <laughs> yes like every every guy it's like no no him. no 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 he's a dud no 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 I'm like so which one <laughs> okay. yeah there's definitely and all you go what him <laughs> I feel like I've got a strange taste. Like my whole life, I don't know. Like I haven't, you know, I've, t I've tasted sort of, you know, the real good looking guy or whatever, but I, I really love the character of somebody, like their personality. So sometimes my taste is, you know, not typical. <laughs> so maybe he's like, come on, Sarah, you can do better. I think that's, <laughs> I feel like that's what's going on. But um, yeah, we just make a joke of it. <laughs> okay. So he stops you every time and says, no, no, no. What, what, really? This guy? <laughs> like a lot of the time, but sometimes if I'm just so gung ho, like there's not yeah. much you can do. I'm like, a, I'm like a steam train. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. So when you guys wind up all the way back at the apartment, then is there like a weird vibe between that, those two, like in the kitchen afterwards? Like, no, you go, you go ahead, get your, get the water. You no, 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 no. You're the guest. Like, <laughs> Is that happening? Like locker room shit? <laughs> no, no. He he's a very chilled person. So yeah, I, I'm really quite lucky. I feel like he's the least jealous person, especially like in the moment. He's not going to be too jealous. I mean, he might. He'll sort of like jump onto me and kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like take me away from him, uh, or yeah, you know, tell me to hop off <laughs> if I'm riding someone. <laughs> Come here. Like, I want more of you, which, again, I think is just sexy. It's like he, like he wants uh, wants more of me. Yeah. So that's as far as I think it goes. But he's very chilled. Like, he's not, you know, puffing his chest down and being like, oh, I was fine. <laughs> like standing there like, you having fun? <laughs> you having a good time? You know, <laughs> with his arms crossed. <laughs> Exactly. So I feel quite blessed in that in that space because you do need somebody like that if, if they're overly. And men, from my experience, they are protective and they're like, you know, teetering on the line of like, hey, you're mine, like you're, you're, you're my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely that level of respect that you've got to have. And I feel like we've been really lucky with the men that have come in that they can be respectful because that is important. And I know that the experience is different for men than it is for women from 
you know, all the things I've been through. For me, I'm like very open and it's very sexy to live out that fantasy of, of making out with another girl and like teasing and, and really putting on a show yeah. in all the right kind of ways. Whereas men, you know, I haven't really had experiences where two guys are like making out and like, you know, teasing me. This, you know, it doesn't really yeah. happen that way. For me. Yeah. So is it is that pretty much the go to that that you'll find a guy he'll find a girl or is it like sometimes you guys find uh, a girl together or multiple women or multiple men or like what? Yeah, I would say that we've been with more women than we have men. Yeah, uh, and yeah, it, it really varies. Like sometimes, sometimes we just all hang it out, and then one thing leads to another. And I remember one night that yeah, we we're just having fun, and it was me and a bunch of. Uh, girlfriends and we were just trying on all my lingerie and jumping around the house and dancing and then you know next thing you know you're all uh you know having that adult playtime. and again I just find like it's an extension if, if you're in, with a group of adults that are comfortable with their sexuality and they're confident then it's just a lot of fun like there's never this weirdness of like oh like are we doing something sexual now it's just like oh that was fun yeah I'm like, oh, now we're doing that and experiencing pleasure and fun together. So it's like, oh, it's just you wake up and go, damn, that was so much fun. And I think that's something I've learned over the years. I remember having, uh, wasn't in this relationship. Uh, I was just single and I had this amazing foursome and I forgot my Air- AirPods somehow back at the place. So I went back there the next day, had a chat with one of the guys. I was like, that was so much fun. And instead of like, oh, grab my AirPods and, and get the hell out of there. I'm like, Hey, let me just say that was like so good. I had so much fun. Like how hot was that moment and this? And it, that really takes confidence. And I've seen a lot of women, they might go and do this, but then they'll like hide the fact that they've done it. And I used to be like that. And I realized, you know what? I'd prefer to celebrate it than to hide it because that shame starts to fester in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once you like, <clears throat> I, I, yeah, I feel like there's two tracks. Like once you sort of like do it and hide it, it sort of builds up. And then eventually, you know, maybe like explodes and, and whatever, because you're hiding like this other because hiding something can be hot. Right. But then at the same time, it's yeah. like uh, if you don't want to be hiding it and you're hiding it and it's this like dark thing that you've made it, it well, fucking sucks. Yeah. And if I know I'm going to see these people in my circles, I don't want to feel awkward around them. Yeah. I'd rather just address the elephant in the room and actually celebrate the elephant in the room. And it makes everybody a lot more calmer. It's a, it's been a really great strategy that I've implemented for my sure. own self-esteem and confidence and just permission for others to realize, Hey, well, that wasn't something bad because growing up, you're never, you know, never told that that's something that's okay. And it, you have to go on your own self-discovery journey when you become somebody who's sexual in your adult life. I think that's, probably why it's so taboo or whatever is because even when you're like <clears throat> talking to your friends when you're like 15 or 14 or 13 or whatever age you are when you start to have your sexual really have your sexual awakening and be active it's always like oh yeah could you imagine how crazy that or you're or you're seeing it in porn or it's never like talked about like well you could there's websites like, you know what I mean? Like no one ever is like taking it, at least when I was younger, no one was ever taking, it was always like this fantasy that you would live out. Like maybe yeah. we'll get so-and-so yeah. drunk and so-and-so will get drunk and then they'll like make out. And then one of us will get it's like, dude, that it, it's truly like a lifestyle. And that, is, that, that isn't taught. It's always like, you know, uh, we struggle in America. Well, worldwide, we struggle in America with, yeah. with like, you know, um, uh, LGBTQIA plus stuff. And it's like, none of that is recognized as like, it's just starting to kind of get a little bit or whatever, but this is a, this is a lifestyle that, that people can, can find things they cannot find in monogamy. Yeah. Look, I think it's a really tricky thing to approach. And we see that in the educational systems. It's so hard to know, well, when do you talk about it with kids? Because, you know, you, sh- you do want to protect children and their innocence for as long as possible. So navigating that when, you know, in their late teenage years or when they are introduced to sex, it's like it's a really tricky thing that a lot of adults find hard because you have to tread this line of being, of not sharing, being too sort of detailed with what you share with them, Mm -hmm. but to allude to, you know, how it can be. Um, And so, yeah, I'm very passionate about that topic and equally about 
how hard it is and when and how to have those conversations with young adults because they might be becoming sexually active at a younger age than what you think that conversation should be had. But once they're becoming sexually active, now it's like, well, they're out there and they could be the, you know, especially women in situations where they're doing things that they don't want to do. And I've personally experienced that coming into the world because there was nothing around. It was like, oh, I'll just do this because I think this is what I should do rather than actually understanding how to communicate and give consent. And I would say that's still something I'm working on, you know, 27. <laughs> I'm yeah. still like, oh, you know, I don't want that. How do I communicate that in the bedroom? Yeah, and that's not a, it, none of that is easy, and it should be. You know, consent is fu- it's fucked up. Like where we're at with that, with with all with, <laughs> out of everything you said, the educational piece around consent, just for like grown fucking ass adults to to know <laughs> like this isn't good or this like you know, and you're and, and you know if you're intuitive and whatever you can you can sort of feel the cues and like oh it's a stop sign oh no like whatever I should stop whatever but there is no better indicator than someone telling you what's up you know and people like it's so unsexy well you know so is being being raped like you know what i mean like so let's not do that let's have that so on the educational piece right on the on the on in your coaching because part of your coaching is vast education like how much about non-monogamy and like (laughs) like the right cues, I guess, to, to initiate that, see if someone's interested in that, how much of that is in your coaching? Yeah, look, I, I've had some clients individually explore it. And then I have had opportunities to actually work with couples that are already open or wanting to transition to being more open. And the things that you have to cover are communication and consent. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're very important. And there's lots of ways that you can communicate that without having to go, are you consenting to what is about to happen? <laughs> you know, yes. but again, it takes, it takes a lot of confidence to bring it up because you first have to become okay with what you're saying. Yeah. And if it's something that you've never spoken about, uh, it can be difficult. And a lot of emotions that you didn't know were there may come up that you've got to work with uh, on an individual level before you even go out and start to introduce people into your relationship because the last thing you want to do is bring somebody into a very chaotic dynamic yeah. and put them through that yeah. because, yeah, I would, I would say to all couples, like, do not do this unless you guys are strong. Oh, and, yeah. and if I see any cracks, then we look at the cracks first Sure. because there's no point. It's like dropping an atomic bomb in your relationship. Why would you do that? So, yeah, <laughs> it's not a Band-Aid to go, oh, let's, like, have something fun and spice it up. It's like, well, why are we feeling that way? What's going on first at home with you two? And then let's actually set up a strategy that's really strong and you guys have fun. Like, at the core of all of my coaching is fun. It must feel fun and exciting and playful. That's the energy that I really love to encourage in people and safe. So, yeah, they're the kind of things that I start with. I mean, it's crazy because we talk about consent and how difficult it is sort of being out in the, in the, in the sex wilderness and the dating wilderness. You're just, you're, you're at the bars, you're at the, wherever the hookup spots. And it's like, you are trying to discern and you're too afraid to ask whatever, but then there's these communities like non-monogamous communities, whether it's a sex party or, or like a play party or a swing party or cuddle party. There's a lot of parties guys. Trust me. I know. I know. Uh, I've got a great, uh, Swing is story. Oh, we're, that's where we're headed. So hang on to that little guy. Okay. Hang, <laughs> hang on to it. Um, I'm coming for it. Um, and, and, and people don't realize with those, those events, those communities are all consent based and, and nine times out of 10 are highly vetted. So it's like, people aren't coming up to you just like grabbing your tits or your genitals or like slapping you in the face or putting chains around like they ask first because it's consent based and vetted and that's what um i think is needs to be drilled home more is is those those are those are safer places to practice stuff like this yeah they have a different vibe to them though i don't know why like it's such a yeah, the ones like the sex clubs that I've been to and the sex parties that I've been to as well, it definitely has a different vibe. I think it's because you know that you're there and everybody's <laughs> aware of it. Yeah. It changes it. So when you're out, I think one of the the cool things and also one of the things that makes it harder consent-wise is that it organically has to develop 
And sometimes it's just, you know, it's the right night, the right energy, the right vibe and, and it's something yeah, you, you want to do. And there's something really exciting about that and spontaneous rather than when you do go to a sex party or a sex club. Like, you know, you're going there with a 99% <laughs> chance of something sexual happening. Whereas if you go out, you don't know. The night could go nowhere. It could be a dead night or actually, holy moly, there is some serious energy happening here. Like, what? I'm going to follow this. So, yeah, really different experiences. So I'm getting from you that you prefer the sort of going out and seeing what happens over going to like a sex party or a swing party or. Yeah. yeah. I mean, damn, I've had some fun adventures. I, I've, I've been like me and my friend that used to travel together. We used to just go to them and, and kind of like run around naked and just like run, run amok. Like we really loved it. We went to one in Madrid, uh, in Spain, which was wild. I had, I actually had a really wild experience in there. And then <laughs> another one in, in Vegas, um, which wasn't as good, to be honest. I thought the European sort of sex spa house was a lot more fun than the Vegas one. It was a bit scary. I, I was a bit scared in there, to be honest. I was genuinely running for my life around that sex club. I was like, ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I think when a penis came out of the shadows. I was like, whoa! <laughs> like, I did not expect it. I'm like, I think we should get out of this weird dungeon area and go back <laughs> The, the light area <laughs> me and my friend were like like running up there together so yeah because those sex clubs you usually have to go with a, a partner so if you're a guy you have to go with a, a girl well that's what our experiences were so you kind of go in as a couple even though we were just friends yeah because if you go as like a single woman you're like the unicorn and everyone's chasing the unicorn around oh yeah to, yeah yeah oh, um, penises. <laughs> 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 okay, so so th there's three things here that you've laid out on this uh, in this deck of cards we have on the table. W one, you said you had a wild experience at a swinger party. Let's start there. But then I'm yeah. going to ask about Spain, and then I'm going to ask about Vegas, just to let you know. So <laughs> tell me this wild story about the about the swinger. I can't wait for this. This one was a special one for me. It was actually quite sentimental. It was the first time I ever squirted, and uh, you always remember that. It was a, a lovely Turkish man, very strong forearms, excellent <laughs> hands. But the night didn't start out that way. Uh, my friend was like, please, uh, we were on one of those apps, like, uh, what is that one called? Oh, not hot toddy, uh, fiery three-way, what's it called? Uh, field? Oh, oh yeah, I don't God, know. I'm going to have to There's find it, but it was something. So many apps. It could have been as simple as three-way or something. I don't know. Anyway, we were playing around on that, and I was tired. Like, we'd be, I work hard. Like, when I was traveling, you know, I'd be running seminars and then running these boot camps. And so I like to veg out and be an introvert when I get back to the hotel. But my friend was like, come on. Like, you know, I'm talking to this couple on this app. And I'm like, nah, not into it. Nah, don't want to. Anyway, he eventually convinces me like he was so good at. And we end up going to this random hotel in uh, Texas. <laughs> Where were we? Houston? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, knock on the door. It's just the weirdest experience. You know, I'm half asleep. I'm like, why are we here, man? Like, we, let's go home. Like, no, you know, um, knock on the door. And then we go in and there's four other couples. Like, it was a small hotel room. So we're all in there and it's like, you know, quite an intense. Like, you've got to be confident to go into that space. What was lovely, what I loved about it is the, the girls gave me my own little outfit, this little fishnet stocking onesie. So I was like, oh, you know, like very inclusive. You know, I got me a drink, everything like that. And so it was actually a really beautiful first experience because that was kind of the first time I'd been to a hotel and it was like, you know, we were there for that one thing. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, you know, I had sex with some of uh, the women, which was really hot, doing some scissoring and like, it was just fun, you know, it was just like exploring it. And then, yeah, this one of the husbands of, yeah, one of the women, like he was just, he made another woman squirt and I said, oh, I've never squirted. You know, ah, I don't think I can. <laughs> anyway, next minute he's made me squirt five times on the bed. Like I was, it was more than just a sexual experience. It was just like an awakening. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, how are you doing that? Oh, my God. Wow. Like, uh, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> it was really wild in that sense. So, yeah, that was that's always stuck with me ever since. Still friends with them. They're great people. I bet. Yeah. Who wouldn't who wouldn't <laughs> be friends with them still? So what did you ever figure out what this guy's secret is? He has a magic penis or was it a technique? You know or it's the hands. So it was the hands. It was this, it was a, like, honestly, me and my friend afterwards, we were like, 
And then my friend went and tested it and like developed. And then I even taught um, an ex-boyfriend of mine how to do it. And he was like, thank you so much, Sarah. Like this has been a gift. Like I've been able to pleasure so many more women. So we wanted to make a course, but there's a guy out there. I think he, he worked for Pornhub Kenny or something. Oh, he like wears his black gloves and like shows you how all these techniques. So he kind of already does it, which is awesome. Like there's some teachers out there, but we were so mind blown by this technique and just wanted everybody. We were like, everyone needs to know this in the world, but it's definitely a lot to do with that forearm strength. And then the motion of how you're, you're actually going up and down. And then also the pressure on their belly we learned was a huge factor. So yeah, um, <laughs> there are a couple of secrets there. <laughs> I'm not the best. I've tried to do it. I'm like, damn, this is hard. Like how do guys, guys do this? Um, but there's, yeah, it's definitely a great skill to have in your toolkit for sure. Oh my you're God. A guy yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, was it was it like the the motion or the, the like the come hither thing, or was it more up and down? No, it was more an up and down. Mm, yeah, that's it was interesting. Up and down. Yeah, yeah. It is really interesting, and I know that there's lots of techniques out there, but I, without a doubt, and I've had it before. I've had it after, and again, it's always that similar sort of locked in and feeling very firmly just held, and then that motion right in the right spot. So you do right. have to hit the right spot. And I even think it's maybe about your length, your finger length as well, depending on on her vagina. Like it, all of those things play a role in it. But I think everybody should really learn more about all those different techniques because you make your sex life so much more fun. Yeah, I mean, and that's a, 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 you were like, oh, I've never squirted before. I can't, right? And then you're like, oh, fuck, like all, painting the fucking room five times, right? I was- yeah i was like wow thank yeah. you no that's incredible thank and you. and um we've heard on this show i keep saying we what's going on but it's just a thing um <laughs> the pressure on the stomach the lower abdomen at the same time is the finger motion right whether it's this this uh-huh. whatever so that's a thing okay so we that there's that technique um, have you spoken about this before because i'm obviously i'm not a, a sex coach but i know you've spoken to them so yeah we've we've talked about it a few times um but what's crazy is it, it all of it um is like a variation um so it's like we're sort of painting this like uh, uh what do they call those um where you're like putting up it's not a collage but it's similar right <laughs> Mosaic a mosaic yeah we're, we are painting yeah. a squirting mosaic people <laughs> so you can sort of pick and choose like which pieces you want to take into your but we have the finger motion and then the pressure on yeah. the lower ab at the same time seems to be a game changer really truly yeah and and it does require a lot of strength i have seen men tap out fuck yeah exhaustion yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and every woman's different right you know even the mental thing does play a role like for me that was more fun like holy moly this is awesome it's like a sex workshop uh then there's actually mixing it with the pleasure where you're really in present and you attach it to this more romantic emotional connection so this is why like for me again that sometimes the spontaneous things like group sex is great but to really sink in and connect deeply it's a different story that's why I, my sex club adventures or swingers experiences or you know group sex scenarios are more fun and playful they're not so much like i'm really linked in on a spiritual level right that's different yeah th- that's totally different i think i think it, it d- depends on what kind of non-monogamy you're looking for but i think and maybe I'll get shit for saying this, but like most people would probably prefer to have like one anchored in life partner and then have, yeah. you know, but I mean, shit, I could be wrong because yeah. we've had a lot of polyamorous people on the, on the show too. Look, and I, I don't teach anybody anything, but what I, I do. And again, I would just refer them to somebody who understands that and has lived it mm-hmm. because I, I have always loved this style. And so if people are open to that and they want to learn about what I've done, then sure. But again, I'm not like, yeah, claiming I know and understand all of the structures because there is so many mm-hmm. and there are coaches out there to help navigate that world and choose the right one for you and your partner. Yeah, and there's so much in between too. Um, yeah. Okay, so when you, okay, when the guy went to try to make you squirt, were you like, you're never going to get it? And then he did it. <laughs> what did it feel like when you squirted? Was it shock? Was it? I was just like, Oh my god, I was like, is that me? It was like an out-of-body experience. I was like, is that me? Oh my god, it's me! It's like it's doing it. I was just, this is just so cool. Um, because yeah, if your whole life you think, oh no, I just can't do that, and then you unlock it, it's like the superpower. You're like, ah! <laughs> I can do it. Yeah. So it was more just 
ecstasy, really. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, and then he yeah. was able to do it four more times. Yes. Yeah. I was like, how do I even have, like, that much liquid in me? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's insane. Um, and, again, I think even the the experiences with the women, they were hot, like, like just the scissoring and, oh, like, you know, there's other people in the room, but they kind of fade away when you're just – so present with somebody else so that also like with his partner i was loving that that was a really great experience too yeah that's really cool that's really fucking cool and i'm glad that i'm glad that you yeah. we got that on sex party because what i mean what the I fuck know. right yeah I know. we but said we cool. were we were gonna do a horny episode and here we are um what uh what happened in spain what was the story like in spain Spain was the first sex club I ever went to and it was amazing. It was a spa, a spa sex place. So there's a lot of those where, you know, it mixes the, the pools with the sauna and the steam room. And then they have rooms where you can go and play and have sex. So yeah, that was my first experience. And so, you know, I was cautious uh, and just aware, you know, you're in a completely different uh, place and, you know, you don't know these people and a lot of them don't speak English. Like the the guy that I did have sex with, he didn't speak a word of English. Um, and we actually broke the – so what happened? I mean, this might be – this is a lot. This this experience is a lot, but I'll hey, share. Yeah, we're no, on the sex party podcast. Here. Um, you know, we, we go into this room. <laughs> Jesus. We go into this room. And my friend, I don't know where he was, but it was dark in this room and – I was with one person in front of me and I was sucking his dick and I was like, yeah, this is so much fun. And I was really in the moment. And then I kind of just looked up and it was like all of these different guys came out of the dark. Like, and I, suddenly there was like all of these penises. It was like something out of this wild anime uh, porn movie or something. And I'm like, whoa. And for me, I was like, oh, this is too much. And I remember just like getting up and dragging that guy to the bathroom to get away from all Like I was like, this is too much for me. It was like an overload. And we ended up having sex in the bathroom and broke the, you know, the, the, the big like white, where you wash your hands. I don't know what you call it, but where I was sitting up on that and we were having sex and the whole thing broke. And I was like, Oh my God, we're going to get out of here. This guy doesn't speak English. I was like, all right, bye. See ya. Thank you. Uh, and so that was my experience at the Madrid place. And then I went and spoke to my friend and we sat in the sauna and just giggled, you know, and went, oh my God, that was wild. Like, let's go home. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like it was a, a successful, but also like, oh, okay. There's definitely boundaries to what I want or what I would want to do in these environments. So you do have to have street smarts. Yeah, because I mean, if you're on your knees blowing a guy and all these guys are coming out of the darkness right it was scary. <laughs> yeah and some people w might be into that right but again without that like for forewarning or consent that's fucking yeah. crazy that could be crazy as fuck yeah and uh, you know i think in europe people are a little bit more liberal mm -hmm. uh with sex and and things like that so again you do have to have street smarts like i wouldn't tell somebody to just go there without somebody that they feel safe with you have to and for me i'm very lucky because i feel like i have been very street smart my whole life with that stuff i don't know how yeah. but um i know when i need to get out of a situation um and i know when i feel okay and i can keep going so yeah it's um i don't think it's for everybody you have to be aware enough and comfortable enough to totally go to those yeah, yeah and, and the ones that we've had on people talking about they've, they've gone to um in america have been like really vetted really safe really like you have yeah. to like kind of pay a yep. whatever and send your profile to be looked at before you go that's and, really that's very good yeah yeah well yeah this next piece i'm going to ask you about vegas that's in america <laughs> so now you can just talk. but like the thing about vegas is vegas is super horny it's a fucking city built right. on on sex and 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 sin city right or whatever but um yeah. there are like if you find yourself there, there's some grime, grime grimy spot. I found myself in a grimy yeah, spot I'm or two fine. in Vegas. Same. Yeah. I think, I think we were at the same place. Potentially. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know right where that place is at actually. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> Cause I, I don't think there's many, like it was pretty dingy. I was like, oh. it's like all kind of that green illuminated light. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Yeah. Um, but again, look, I think there's private experiences that tend to be a lot better sometimes than the actual sex clubs so it does pay to on like you know know certain people and and then you know you can really choose and you know what kind of people are going to be there whereas when you go to a sex club you yeah. don't always know that and you're kind of like running the gauntlet because you don't know who's going to be in there on that particular night 
at that particular time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounds yeah. like it wasn't very vetted. <laughs> like, because with me, I think, I think our driver overheard us talk. And, you know, the drivers in Vegas, like, they're just, like, looped in with everybody trying to make money. Yeah. So he's like, oh, I have a place. And we're like, no, 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 we want to go to, like, upscale. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 da, 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 da. So her and I go to this place, and it, like, wasn't upscale. It was, like, you know, we were waiting for it to become upscale. It just never did. And it was like, it fucking smells in here. Like, someone's been <laughs> just fucking blown apart with penis and like like we need to get out and so <laughs> we go to leave and there's like some guy he's like oh you're leaving already well hang on <laughs> you haven't met linda yet or whatever it's like no 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 no. we don't want to meet no i don't know yeah so we, we left that is, i love that that's your experience <laughs> how many other people have experienced that yeah. <laughs> where they're like hey let's get out of here because again it's so much about energy and the the atmosphere <laughs> and if it's not there it's not there and with sex you've got to feel it like i always say to my clients if somebody comes home with you and your house is a mess and feels like a doctor's surgery and there's just no vibe <laughs> to it at all you've got no fluffy pillows no fluffy carpet like that is not going to make somebody want to take their clothes off and feel comfortable but if you've yeah. got like a beautiful open fire and a, and a bare bloody rug or you know, <laughs> something, it's different. And that's the same when you go to a club. There's some nights where it's like, yeah, this is not good. I don't want to meet any Linda at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think my experience there at the Vegas one was the same. I was like, I was yeah. like, dude, let's get out of here. And they're like, yeah. where are you going? Like, because they know that you're the best thing there that night. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you and your girl would have been like the the life of the party. And I, the way I imagine it, it's almost like you've strayed from the boardwalk, you know, <laughs> and you've kind of got, gone in there and they're like, excellent, you know, we've got these these new playmates. But, yeah, the, yeah. this is the, the dark side to going to sex clubs that you don't know and, and you don't know who goes there. Yeah, I mean, maybe don't trust a fucking Uber driver either, you know? They fucking, but hey, you have to make these decisions to live a little. You got to have experiences, right? Um, I didn't want to meet Big Linda. We got the fuck out of there, you know? But they definitely tried to stop us. You said, you said if someone comes over and it looks like a doctor's surgery, oh my God. Je Jesus, yeah. That's such a. I actually bring that up is one of the rooms in there, they actually had it set up like a little doctor's oh. thing, you know, where you sit on the, sit on the, the chair and kind of your legs are spread and um I wasn't on there but the, our friend that we'd met the one kind of cool chick in there uh we weren't even doing anything sexual like me my friend and her were just fucking around in that room next minute there's like 10 people just watching and just like pulling their cocks out where did you guys come from where like where the shadows yeah. <laughs> this was in and Vegas yeah, it was in Vegas. Oh, we're Jesus like, I think, I think we've had enough. Let's get out of here. So, yeah, they're not so much like these romantic uh, flings that you kind of have, but that's the idea I had before going to them and actually mm -hmm. understanding what it was like in there. Yeah, I mean, again, the shadows can be fucking great, right? But when stuff's coming out, when cocks are coming at you out of the shadows, you got to know what's in the shadows, guys. So, you know, take take some notes from this episode. Make sure you realize what it, in the shadows is great, but just know what's in there before you fucking go reaching yes. around in the middle of the night. Um, I, I, exactly. I want to um, cap this episode off your second appearance on Sex Party um, and talk about your OnlyFans. We didn't get a chance to talk about it last time. How long yep. have you been doing it? Um, was it something you wanted to do? Like, did it come natural? Like, yes, I'm doing an OnlyFans. Or were you like, did you sit on it? Were you nervous about doing it? Because a lot of people, you know, I like to ask people who do OnlyFans on the show to like speak to the people who are just sitting ready to press go on their phone, but they're nervous. So like, you know. Yeah, I definitely went through that uh, nervousness and being a coach, right? Like you go, mm, like, you know, can I do that? But I guess for me, intimacy and sex is an extension of what I do and it's a part of who I am and I actually one of the reasons I did it was to have a platform where people felt that they could talk about sex and intimacy with me more freely uh, which has been great because I've, I've even gotten clients from that because they feel safe they're like hey the, you know this is happening Sarah I can't get it up with you know when I have sex. And, and so I wouldn't be able to have those conversations on Instagram. It just doesn't happen. So that was one part of thinking like, you know, on a professional level, extending the, the business. And then on a personal level, it was actually for me to stay connected with my own sexual and sensual journey, because I've done some really wild things with, you know, different people over the years. Uh, but I'm very, I would say I'm quite conservative when it comes to OnlyFans. For me, the angle I'm wanting to lean into, like I've done some sex videos um, with my partner and, and blowjob videos and stuff, but 
the key thing for me is that it has to be a classy video that I wouldn't mind if the whole world saw. Like that's my protocol is like it has to fit into that criteria. And it's been really hard, to be honest, to to get on there and, and create the regular content that I like. Yeah, I think people tend to, you know, it's that old mentality of like, oh, I should just start stripping. Well, like stripping's hard and it's a lot of work yeah. and you're climbing a pole. Well, OnlyFans is is incredibly difficult, but also at the same time, like you have to be consistent. You have to be this, you have to be that. You have to do all these things. So like people don't realize it is a commitment, but it's also a commitment to like consistency and 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 comfortability. Like you can't, there's been a couple people I've talked to on one or two on the show and then a couple more around the show that have done it and just been like, you know what? This isn't for me. But then there's been some that are like, I don't think I'm going to like it. And they go and they're like, fuck, this is awesome. I'm making money. I like figured out I have all these like crazy kinks that I love now. Like I love performing for people. So yeah. it is twofold. It is. Yeah. And I've definitely experienced that. And you don't just make money on there. You have to work like and actually do it. And you, you learn about you learn about what you're comfortable with and how to communicate that. Like, I don't want people DMing me being like, send me this video or writing, well, uh, writing your boyfriend or whatever. I want them to speak to me in a certain way. And it's powerful because I say, I don't like to be spoken. Like uh, I am not that kind of content creator. I don't like to be spoken to like that. If you want to be here, you talk to me like this. So it's been powerful because they're like, Oh, okay. Like this. I'm like, yeah, more like that where it's respectful and it's it's has a little bit more of a romantic edge, I would say. And I really want to focus in on just the captions for the content as well, really feed, feeding into like erotica, like those novels I think that really uh, com communicate or talk, yeah, talk about the, the acts, sexual acts or, or intimacy in a really romantic way because I know that that helps my clients as well and it helps me. Because I feel more connected, I feel more proud of what I create. Then, yeah. So yeah, that's just been my experience so far. <laughs> so you are currently active on OnlyFans. I am. Yeah, yeah. I could probably yeah. be more active, Dustin. <laughs> I think. Um, but well, the cool thing about it is, you know, there's quite a lot of content on there already for people mm. to explore. So once you do have a good foundation of content, a, a new subscriber can jump in and, and go through everything. And so I've set it up that way. Um, for that. So people discover it. And to be honest, I don't even actively promote it. So that is something that I'm noticing. It's like, okay, Sarah, like what's there? Sometimes I'll put it on my story or talk about it on Instagram, but just really promoting it and being more proud of it is something that I want to do in the coming months. And yeah, just not, I think even coming on this podcast to share more intimately with you, Dustin, it's like, I'm sharing things that I've only really shared to my friends or, or certain people. So Again, it, it's that whole journey that you go on to owning and, and being proud of, of the things that you've experienced in life and, and pulling back that curtain to behind the scenes of what goes on during life. Because often on Instagram, for example, we just see certain highlights or glimpses, but we don't really know some of the, the juicy things that happen. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm incredibly honored to be the slightest little part of that on this show. You will always have a platform to come here and talk about dating, sex, fucking cocks coming out of the shadows, whatever, whatever you want. Your OnlyFans, you, once you get more comfortable with it, you can come and like blow the OnlyFans up here, whatever you want to do. We could talk about like the sexualization of pizza. I don't really care. Whatever, <laughs> you're always welcome. Whatever you want. Sarah, Javon, thank you. So goddamn much for coming back to Sex Party, being uh, being in a horny episode, opening up about everything. Let's remind these beautiful party people where they can come hang out with you, uh, subscribe to your OnlyFans, get your coaching services, yes. dump out buckets of money. Yeah, so because we're on the topic of OnlyFans, it's just dating with Sarah, or dating Sarah actually made it a little bit more personal. Okay, you know? I see what dating you're doing. Dating Sarah, you yeah. get that experience behind the scenes. And then my Instagram is dating with Sarah official. And you can slide into my DMs all day, every day. I'm happy to chat. Uh, I respond to them, not somebody else. And even my YouTube, I've been quite consistent with that. So that's dating with Sarah as well. Yeah, well, and yeah, we thank all... you again for having me on and giving me a platform. I think it's really amazing. Yeah. And I love chatting with you. 
<clears throat> You're always welcome at the party, Sarah. We will link everything in the notes. Um, and yeah, till next time, because you know there's going to be a next time. See, See you soon. Bye. What a wild episode. Thank you to my guest, Sarah Javans, for coming back to Sex Party and being with me this week. If you guys want to see more guests like Sarah, if you want to see Sarah again, if you're listening on platforms like Apple and Spotify and you just want to show some love, some appreciation, some desire for more Sex Party, what can you do? You can leave a rating. You can leave a review you can subscribe to the show. That's the most important thing you can do is subscribe to this podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, ooh, ooh, yeah, what's happening? What's going on? How's it feel? Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel. You can like the video. You can like all the videos. You can leave a comment. I love you guys. You know, as always, I'm available in the DMs on Instagram, and I will see you all back here next week thanks for listening the party continues next week click subscribe and let's make this a regular thing follow the show on instagram and twitter at sexpartyfm follow dustin at dustin ribka